please remember that nothing we say here should be taken as personal advice. The conversation is for entertainment purposes only. If you have questions about your financial situation, please talk to a licensed financial advisor. Let's go. All right. Welcome to another episode of Future Money, where we talk about the technologies of the future. That will make us money. Eventually. <laughs> uh, well, we laugh. We laugh to... You know, prevent ourselves from crying. No, but uh, laughter, laughter is always a, a good remedy a too. Good, a good defense mechanism, for I sure. Might say. For sure. Um, but no, you know, it, it, there's no sugar coating. This has been a this has been a brutal year. Uh, yeah, horrendous, man. Yeah, you know, and and so we're gonna take this this episode of Future Money to talk about not necessarily technologies specifically, but talk more about the big r word recession and i know we've been hinting at it for a while now but yeah. uh unfortunately mr uh we won't say his name out loud but his his last name rhymes with schmowl <laughs> um he's he seems hell-bent on on moving yeah. our economy into the recession yeah i mean i i think the the purpose of this podcast is really to share some of the insights you know and, and frankly the last few months have been really about trying to make sense of the macro environment and what's yeah. going on. By the way, I all miss you, bro. It's been a month since we've done this. Yeah, it has been a, it's, <laughs> it's been a while. Been a month, yeah, I miss while, you too, yeah. man. Yeah, we've been yeah. that busy. It's, it's been nonstop, yeah, frankly. For sure. Um, I, wish, I wish it was busy for better reasons. Correct. Uh, but yeah, you know, I, I think we, we, we did an episode about recession actually at the beginning of summer. Yeah. Uh, but today we want to talk about bear markets, right? You hear that word, bear, bear, you know, <laughs> what, what, is, what does that yeah. mean, right? Like we're doing this today is uh, September 27th. All three in indices, S&P, the Dow, and the NASDAQ are both in a bear market territory. Oh, bear market, yeah. What is that? Let's start there. What does that mean? So bear market, for those of you who remember back to Finance 101, 20%. Uh, yeah. down from the high or from any point mm -hmm. um, is what's considered a bear market. Yep. Um, as of right now, the NASDAQ is getting hit the hardest or has gotten hit the hardest yep. where it's down over 30%. Yep. Uh, I think the Dow just entered bear market today this last did. week. I think today. Yeah, yesterday, 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 actually. Yeah, yesterday, yeah, yeah. yeah, sorry. So we, we officially hit bear market on the Dow. Mm -hmm. uh, the S&P is somewhere in the middle. And, and that's generally how the three indices go yep. uh, during downturns, uh, the Dow being most likely the most conservative of the yeah. three. And what's the difference between a bear and a recession is that recession kind of is most about economic conditions, yeah. but market is really about markets. Like what are the markets doing right now and what behavior, you know? Correct. So, so a refresher, once again, for what is a recession, mm -hmm. right? It's two quarters consecutively of negative economic growth. Technically. Technically. <laughs> However, we sort of had that in the first two quarters. Sort of, kind of. We but, have to wait for yeah. the NBER to tell yeah. us so, though. Yeah, so so we had a couple of trade deficits earlier in the year, and while the economy was ultimately <laughs> strong in the first half of this year, yeah. um, uh, on some people's calculations, we technically hit a recession for two quarters, but that's not really what we're talking about. Consumption, uh -huh. uh, you know, the, the U.S. consumer and, and jobs and all that kind of stuff is much more yep. um, affected in these recessionary environments. Yeah. Are we are we technical enough for you guys? Yeah, that's the, all the very exciting <laughs> stuff. Anyhow, it feels yeah. like shit. Let's just <laughs> let's get to the bottom of it. Yeah, market is down 20, 30 percent, depending on when you are. The average. NASDAQ stock is down 45%, right? I think I saw this morning, every IPO that went out last year is, is down uh, up to 70, 80%. Yeah. So it's really, there is so much negative sentiment out there. Yeah. And I think people are wondering why that is. And I think all comes back to rates. So let's talk about what's happening. Let's talk about why why Powell wants to raise rates and, and, and why that hurts markets. Yeah, so, you know, I think the first thing to think about is, right, all, all this is is predicated on the the you know the big word that everybody hates to talk about now which is inflation right, right. um and the last you know inflation has been really bad Mm -hmm. because of supply chain issues, because of increased demand on right. top of that. Yeah. Um, and ultimately, what was weak monetary policy from the Fed right. before then? That was a mistake, right? Huge mistake uh, right. in 2021 to not start to raise, raise right. gradually. Mm -hmm. But but 
Well, let's, first of all, yeah. before we move on, I think it's important to to also say that inflation is is really bad. Yes. Long term, correct. We really want the Fed to tame inflation. We want them right. to kill it because it erodes our purchasing power. It really hurts our wealth long term, yeah. right? We don't want to be Zimbabwe. We don't want to be <laughs> Venezuela. We don't want to be these countries where you have price of things changing on a daily basis, right? So right. really important, right? Hundred percent, and and that's what the Fed is basically saying. So I think. What's important here is, you know, we had a little bit of what we call a bear market rally in in yep. June, where the market rallied up. It looked like we were heading out of bear yep. market territory, yep. which we did, and yep. and and then the Fed actually, when inflationary reports were actually not coming mm -hmm. down as fast as they'd like, yep. the Fed got a lot more aggressive. Yeah, and that's what tightening is, right? Like the tightening means that the Fed is tightening monetary conditions. They're trying to slow things down, basically. They're trying, inflation is basically too many people wanting too many goods and prices of things go up. So what the Fed is trying to do is trying to raise rates to kind of help tame that demand or really kind of yeah. kill that consumption drive so, so, so people do not go out there and start spending and, and so forth, right? Uh, so I think if the market rallies and, and, and the Fed sees that, that is actually a negative thing. They're gonna be more hawkish, they're gonna be more aggressive, and we don't want them that. And that's what happened this summer, basically. Yeah, and, and you know, again, we, we had these CPI numbers and they were a lot, they were less good than people hoped, albeit not by crazy amounts, but right. they were. And, and I think that, that completely changed the tone of the Fed. Right. Um, who up until that, like a couple of months before that, were sort of like, okay, you yeah. know, maybe we're seeing some things ease. Yeah. And, and that's why the market had rallied yep. at that point. And now they're just like, we don't care. Inflation. Yep. Let's kill this thing. You know, the biggest bazooka that the Fed has is is not the interest rates themselves but the messaging around yes. what they say right I mean. and because the fed had an issue last year with their messaging they were basically seen as almost not believable yeah. which is a, a credibility problem for the fed which is the biggest most important institution in the world is a big big problem so what what powell and company wanted to do they wanted to make sure that you know they people knew that they were serious about inflation no matter what yeah, I think the problem, so obviously the, the tone became much more hawkish, as we call it, right. much more aggressive. Right. Like, we don't really care. We're going to get inflation under yep. control. The problem with that is, is that he's, they're using the playbook from the 80s. Right. Right? The 70s and 80s. And it's not, you know, while history rhymes, it doesn't exactly repeat itself. Right. Like, what happened in the 80s is not exactly the same as what's happening now. And a lot of the inflationary issues we're having are supply chain related right so killing inflation for that is not really going to say that solving an energy crisis that's happening in europe yeah. is like it, well, raising uh, rates is not going to help it that much so you have three different things you got coming out of covid yep. right so you got total dislocations where some countries are covid free and some countries are still have Lockdowns. <coughs> we got <laughs> <China>. <laughs> what? <laughs> what? What? <laughs> we have five trillion dollars of money that we printed uh, in America alone. Is that a lot? <laughs> I think that's that's a okay, lot. That's yeah. a lot. Okay. Uh, we lot. got you know people moving all over the country and you know buying homes and places and yeah. at and 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 zero percent rates everywhere Free for money. year for a long time, right? Yeah. So. And don't forget, once everything opened up, yep. everybody chasing the same things yep. at once. Yeah, a lot of stimmy checks being spent. Yeah, <laughs> I think those are gone. <laughs> I think this guy. Uh, it was like everybody, like travel, right? Like, yeah. and, and you add fuel, you know, the, the fuel energy crisis on yeah, top of that. Yeah, I forgot about that, yeah. right? Which is a big one. February, yeah. Russia invades Ukraine, and you got oil prices going from 70 to yeah. 130, 140 almost, right? But now, they're, but now back to like under 90 again. Right. Which is, Exactly. But have you noticed that gas prices are still pretty high comparatively? I mean, yes, because yeah. that takes time, right? It takes, it takes a lot. And we had an un unexpected jump back up in gas prices over the last week, which yeah. I think is crazy. Well, California is weird, right? Yeah, uh, but it was I just was, like they were was, going down every week, and then all of a sudden there's a jump. I was in Texas two weeks ago. There was a two-handle on. What? Yeah, oh, yeah. It was 280 for gas in Texas. <laughs> Man. 
<laughs> so I'm gonna go fill up my oh wait, yeah, 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 yeah. electric car. So yeah, doesn't exactly, matter. doesn't matter. <laughs> but anyhow, inflation, big problem. The Fed, the only thing they can do is want a couple of things they can do: raise rates, yeah, right. Also, use monetary um, tools such as not buying bonds and so forth to to basically keep tightening, yeah. right? And then also the messaging that they have, which is really yeah. the most important piece, right? So the Fed has been trying to to slow things down, and the mar and as a result, interest rates really determine the pricing or the valuation of all assets from bonds yeah. to stocks to real estate you know so when that happens when we change in the cycle you have to reprice everything and that's what the market is trying to do right now yeah and i think what uh, to just to clarify what you're saying there also is the reason is is right so so when interest rates are at zero yep what else do i have to buy other than risk assets real yep. estate stock etc Nowhere well, to go. Nowhere, nowhere to, to go, go right? Yeah. When interest rates were literally zero a year ago. Yeah, yeah. And now I can look at my money market account that pays me 3%. What money market is that? <laughs> Dude, go online. Go to Marcus yeah. by Goldman Sachs or yeah. whatever, you know, those those online yeah. banks. They pay 3%. Are no, you guys, you, 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 I, was, I was joking. You uh, can buy treasuries. Yeah, one-year treasury is over 4%. Now. Yeah, I bought one this morning for so, 4%. So, yeah. So so that's the what we call the risk-free asset, right? The, the treasury yeah. bond. Right. And so... If you you're have other places to go. To go with your money, yeah. Right. And ultimately, the Fed is sucking money out of the system, yep. really. Yep. And and in no place, I think in it, this place is not going to show itself in any place better than in real estate. Right. Which, by the way, hasn't, if you think about the tertiary, secondary tertiary markets that done really well during COVID, uh, yeah. those markets are starting to feel the squeeze. Yeah, yeah. for sure. Uh, I talked to a client this morning who, who's, who's from ba Boise, Idaho, lives in Los yeah. Angeles, and she's actually wanting to buy a place in Boise because that's what she's from. Yeah. And she couldn't she do can, it for many yeah. years because of what's yeah. happening. Yeah. And now she's like, maybe I can. Maybe yeah. I can. Yeah. And so this is just starting for real estate, right? I agree. L last week I went on Zillow because that's what you do when you're <laughs> our age. You go on Zillow for fun. Um, and for for the first time, I saw a price cut, price cut, yeah. price cut. Yeah, uh, home on the market for you know four so, weeks. So, so there is some really interesting stats. I think that's really important to, to kind of put in perspective is what the Fed is trying to do is make things more expensive or at least curb curb consumption. The by by raising rates, the cost of housing has gone up tremendously, thirty yeah, percent over the last month. Right, we've never seen this kind of this kind of yeah. you know increase. So. Yeah, three. The average mortgage was three and a half percent, I think, last year. The average yep. mortgage is now six and a quarter. Yeah. So think about the cost of that same house. It cost a million dollars. You pay thirty five thousand dollars in, in interest. Yeah. So two two months ago, now you're paying. Yeah. $60,000. Lines of know? credit. We see this, right, with a lot mm -hmm. of our clients. Yep. Lines of credit, personal loans, home loans, auto loans. Everything. Everything's going up. So everything gets more expensive. Yeah. Now people start to say, wait, I have this $100,000 line of credit. It used to be 3%. Now it's 6 do I even Correct. want this anymore? Correct. So again, it's just going to change hab habits, change the, yeah. the way people think about what they need to do. Um, and again, it's 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 uh, it's 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 not the end of the world. It's yeah. it's fine. Like I bought my first mortgage in or my first house in 2013, almost 10 years ago. I paid six and a half percent then, and I thought it was a great deal. Yeah. So everything's uh, relative. Exactly. Right? Eventually, we'll get used to this new normal. Yep. And we don't know if this is where rates are going to stay or not. Right. Um, but eventually, markets stabilize, and I think that's the you know we'll we'll talk about more about this. But yep. the overarching message here is that. There's nothing crazy happening here. Right. This is a renormalization of a, a market that for two years was completely insane. You know, yeah. I, I, I did this thing with, I think, one of the new guys we hired, um, which is in 2007, everything kind of fell apart, right? All these bad loans. Yeah, I want to talk about that eventually, but yeah, go ahead. Yeah, so then we, so we started, how did we do? We started printing a little bit of money. Yep. So we started printing money and then we started printing more money <laughs> and we're like, okay, well we, we just, this, we, this was a, this, this was works. a BB gun. Okay. Now <laughs> we need a real gun. So then we I started remember printing more. I remember when 2008, one of the biggest bailouts was $600 billion. Yeah. It was a yeah. lot of it was money. A lot of money. <laughs> and then we started going, oh, well, 
we need to print even more money. Yeah. So we did that. Yeah. And then we're like, well, okay, well, that's not enough. So then we need to do quantitative easing. QE1, QE2, QE3, yep. <laughs> Operation Twist, whatever it was called. They had all these fancy names for the Fed just providing more and more and more liquidity into yep. the system yep. to spur the economy. And we had this low growth environment. Yep. And so so now we're at a, you know, we started with a BB gun and now we're at a machine gun right. as far. And then COVID hits. Yep. And then now we just hit the nuclear button. We're like, we're just going to print money <laughs> without regard for anything. Yeah. To be frank, you know, we've gone through a pandemic. We've never sure. locked everything. We never locked the globe down. Correct. So, so, so that is, you know, and I, I don't want to sit here and say that I know better than the Fed. <laughs> I think, I think uh, we, we hindsight's always twenty twenty, yeah, right? For sure. You know what I mean? I think the Fed did what they thought was the right thing. Hindsight, probably a couple of uh, those last stimulus maybe would not need it. You know? Yeah, and, and uh, not just not just Fed, but fisc but fiscal, fiscal policy yeah. from the from the from the Biden administration yeah. and the and the Democrats and right. and this is not a Democrat Republican question. This is not a partisan thing. Well, listen, like, it started with 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 Trump, with Trump and, first, then, and, and then Biden continued on. You know, so it's it's everyone's fault. Really. Really, if you correct, think about it. Correct. Correct. Yeah. So, but like you said, this was a hard thing to navigate through. No right. one has ever had to do this. There's always a. There's always a. We've never had to deal with this. <laughs> Someone told me last week. Yeah. How many times have I do I do I need to go yeah. through an event that I'm supposed to only see once yeah. in my lifetime? Yeah. And it's kind of crazy. It, it's but every <laughs> few years, frankly. Yeah. Um. And, and so. So we're at a renormalization process. Yeah. And ultimately, the the market will find its equilibrium. Yeah. And things will be okay. And I think that's the all, all overarching message as we get more into this podcast. Yeah, and I think what some of the questions that I'm getting right now is, and, and, and it's, there's a lot of anxiety. Like we've been yeah. going through this for about a year and people are, are yeah. really kind of at, at, at their wits ends, thinking, yeah. oh, oh, this is Russia, war, nuclear, you yeah. know, rates, you know, every, everything is really coming at you in, in so many ways. And everyone thinking, well, this is different. This is just different. This is different. The reality is, is no, it's not different. Different, it's you know? different, but it's not. It's, yeah, we've gone through yeah. similar situations, yeah. you know, and 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 yes, we don't know how it's going to work out. We totally. have to live with that understanding that uncertainty is going to be part of the equation all the time. Right. That's that's inherently what happens in life and investing right. and so forth. Uh, but the reality is, you know, you look at the banking system, like, you know, talk about 2008. Yeah. Yep. I remember in 2008, I'd show up in the office and the S&P would be down six or 7% a day. And we would thought that the, the whole system is gonna collapse. People were yeah. waiting outside ATM machines yeah. trying to take their money out of banks in yeah. America. Yeah, 10% yeah. unemployment. Uh, that was the reported number that, uh, that yeah. people said Probably it was more, more like 13, 14%. Yeah. Europe, 20, 20 plus percent uh, unemployment in Europe. Yeah. Like the financial system, we, we literally didn't know if the financial system was gonna be a thing the right. following day. And people were losing their jobs yeah. every day. Losing layoffs, their homes. Bear Stearns, you know, Bear Stearns yeah. went under Lehman, you know, it's been 100, 150 years. Yeah. Like, you know, massive financial institution were sure. just falling up. AIG, $50 billion loss in one weekend. Yeah. Like, so, 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 you know, we're not there. Like, this yeah. is not what, what, what's going on. Like, the, the financial system is not leveraged as much. Uh, the debt to loan ratios. In, 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 in most assets at 50, 60%, which is below yeah. the average, the averages, um, you know, even the consumer is not, yeah. is not really struggling. People have cash. You yeah. Know? And the banking reforms too made it so that a lot of people can't borrow money with no income and no jobs. Right. Remember the ninja loans they used to talk about <laughs> uh, in 2006, yeah. seven, eight, and no income, no job applications, yeah. Um, affectionately called ninja loans. Yeah. Um, and people would just fill out applications and just make up numbers on yep. there. Uh, so, and now loans are very strong. The financial strength, like if you, if anybody here is li who's listening has bought a mortgage, bought a house and had to apply for a mortgage, you want, they're like, you spent 72 cents on this thing. Can you yeah. explain to me why you spent 72 <laughs> cents on this thing? Yeah, which has actually worked out well, right? Like we want <laughs> we want a strong financial system. So, okay, so let's go back to bear markets, right? Yeah. So 20% so, so down, yeah. there is different kinds of bear markets. We talked about the financial crisis, the, the GFC, the great financial crisis. Yeah. The, 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 that's, a, that's an event-driven uh, bear market. That's a, basically you have a housing crisis, financial crisis together, and a huge bubble that just bursts. Yeah, you know that's what happened. 
But it wasn't necessarily the event itself, right? That's a structural problem. Right. That's right? exactly it. That's a structural problem where the financial system is is over leveraged yep. and completely out of control. Right. Um, you we know, didn't know what the risks were. We didn't know correct. how much each bank or each institution had. Triple A rated know. BS, which yeah. were basically junk. Yeah. You know? If you haven't watched the the Big Short, yeah, it's one, of the one. Best, one of the best one of best movies. It's around. probably it's one of the best financial <laughs> movies ever made. For, for totally. Real. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's really good. So that that's so event driven. I think is one. Yeah. And I, I I think of that more as like the nine eleven. Yeah. Right. Now, and yeah, exactly. That's like the adventure. So in, in 2000, so 2000 and 2002, there was a bear market basically for almost three years. Yep. And that was the longest ever. And the reason that was is, right, we had the dot com bubble burst. Yep. And by the way, for those of you. Structure called, structure called bear. Yeah, bear exactly. Then, Structural bear. The NASDAQ then, PE was 100, by the way. Today it's like 17, just yep, FYI. Yeah. Um, and the SP's PE was double what it is today. Yeah. So. That's structural. And then once we were starting to sort of climb yeah. out of it, boom, 9-11 hits. Uh, and then we go into it. We sink into a deeper recession. Yeah. Um, so, so that's what I think about when I think of event-driven, like right. black swan events that you right. never saw coming. COVID. Right. right. right? Exactly. COVID. Exactly. Yeah. And again, stuff like this happened. Hopefully, you know, we don't ever see a terrorist attack like we did 9-11. Yeah. But, you know, but that's what happened. And that's kind of what yeah. drives things, right? Yeah. Uh, but right now, what we're seeing is just a cyclical bear market. It just happens because of the cycle. Yep. You know, we have growth. And then we grew at 6% in America last year. Yeah. GDP growth. That's that's the most developed country in the world growing at 6%. Yeah. You know, so at some point, something has got to give. Yeah, right? and, for sure. And, and that's really what happened this year is we're contracting because we can't grow at those levels. Yeah. And, 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 and with rates going up, you're going to see, you know, some small recession probably. Is yeah. it shallow? Is it deep? You know, I don't, I don't know what's going it on. It remains to be seen. It remains to be seen, right? Then, yeah. you know, most pundits, most people say it's going to be shallow because the financial system is strong. Companies are strong. We got, we got earnings growing. But at the, at, the, at the end of the day, we that's what we need to do to yeah. to slow down inflation. Yeah. Yeah, and and it's it's the only tool they have. Yeah, uh, albeit if they might be a little overzealous because yep. inflation doesn't, you know, it doesn't come down in a month. Yep, you know, so so hopefully we look next month and you yep. know three months from now and things start to come down. Yep. Um, let's not forget that we have an election coming up yep. as well, yep. which will also. Um, so the the election actually will be good because yeah. you. I don't care where you are in the political spectrum. Yeah, the the markets like divided government. And the reason why, believe it or not, because of de uh, deadlock, because they want they they know when you have two parties, not a huge reforms will be done, right? Yeah. So uh, the one the one exception to that is is actually when the existing party stays in power uh -huh. versus the new one takes over, it actually ends up being really? better when the existing party stays in power. Okay. But normally you're right. Um. Yeah. So, but but I think more important than that even is. If you look at chart of the stock market, people always ask us like, "Oh, well, who's better for the market, the Republicans, the Democrats?" Honestly, in the end, it really doesn't make a difference. There might be a one percentage difference that might just be some some well, kind of statistical error. Well, there is no doubt that Republicans are more pro business. So I think I think yeah, people people think that's good. But Bill Clinton was the best. You know, the nineties were the best. Obama Obama were good years. Right? Were good. So I don't but think Trump's you can, years were good years too, and Biden's yeah, are bad. So yeah. ultimately, the the data show that it doesn't matter what party is in power, markets do well over time. That's yeah. that's the point in all this. So, like, investing is not. A one-year thing. Yeah. Okay. You're I not think gonna, that's the most important yeah. thing, right? Yeah. So for those people who are starting to invest today, like this is a tremendous opportunity, or for who have new money, this is a tremendous opportunity because markets are cyclical, like yeah. you talked about. Or people are dollar cost averaging, right? Yeah. Like people exactly. that are putting money in. Totally. You know, even even if you have money invested, it sucks to see your accounts down 20, 30 percent. Yeah. But the reality is if you have time in your side. That's really the most important thing. Absolutely. Yeah. Stay invested, right? It's our mantras that we tell our clients all yep. the time. Yep. Dollar cost average, stay invested. Yeah. You know, what do you do the time? Take tax losses. We do that for clients too. It's yep. a big thing and it really does help in the long run. We call it tax alpha. Tax alpha. <laughs> exactly. That's the fancier way to say tax loss harvesting. Yeah. Days. Tax um, alpha. <laughs> tax alpha. I like the way Tim says that. Um, uh, that's going to be the name of our new podcast, <laughs> tax alpha. Yeah. Uh, no, it's just be smart. Like, you know, it, it, it's, it's really about 
understanding that you can't control all of these things. Yeah. And, and, and you are here today. Don't swim against the tide. You can understand. Like people, you know, we, we hear this. Like I think when you first learn about investing, you learn diversification mm -hmm. and you learn don't fight the, the Fed. Okay. Mm -hmm. The Fed is raising rates, which means that markets are going to be volatile, means asset prices have to come down. So don't fight them. Don't be trying to buy high growth stocks yeah. that did well in 2020 because that's all you know. Right. Because that's not what's going to do well going forward. I think that's important because a lot of people started investing during COVID when rates were at zero, right. when money was free everywhere, people were getting, literally getting money for sitting at home. Yep. And and now this is a completely different paradigm. And we, the next 10 years may look very different than yep. the previous 10 years. Yep. And that's what's really important here yep. is we don't know what's, what the market brings, but what, but. I think to be successful, successful as an investor, you have to always, understand the environment you're in Correct. and understand these changing paradigms yeah. and be flexible within your Correct. strategies because what worked before may not work, you know, and you can do this all the time. Yeah. The last 10, the companies that did best last 10 years are not often the companies that do best next 10 years, right? Yeah. We see this all the time. Totally. So I think really you have to understand this is a new world. There is new changes, structural changes, changes in leadership, yeah. changes in, 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 in technologies and all these. So you have changes to in, in, in what I like to call unglobalization. Yeah, right? yeah, so exactly. Bringing stuff home. The right? globalization trade that, that, you know, along with um, zero interest rates right. have basically fed this growth cycle because right. it was all inherently deflationary. So no. we don't know what the next 10 years brings as far as inflation. We're not going to, we're most likely not going to see the inflation numbers a year from now that yeah. we see now. Yeah. We've already started to see those numbers come right. down a little right. bit. And listen, we're not going to sit here and know, say that we know what's no, going to happen. Cause not. if you, if someone tells you that you should probably run. Yeah. Uh, and the for reality sure. is, you know, commodity prices are down. Yeah. Oil, most commodities are down, yep. you know, but you, you, one data point doesn't make a trend, right? Yeah. The Fed needs to see things coming down for two or three, four months in yeah. order for them to be able to say, okay, inflation is coming down. Yeah. We can either stop. And by the way, the minute the Fed says, hey, we're either going to stop, and yeah. this is what happened this summer, the, the pivot, if you heard about it, if the minute they say we're going to stop or start reducing rate next year, yeah. the market will, 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 will turn, right? Correct. So so understand that you don't know when that's going to happen. And this is why, by the way, you can't time things, right? Because right. most of the positive days come really close to the negative days. Correct. Right? Correct. I, and I like to use the... Again, 2008, eight nine as a as a great example, and and we talk about how how do we invest during a bear market during a recession, right? And once again, the two coincide at some point. Right. But they don't necessarily coincide at the beginning. Right. The stock market, as we talk about, always looks forward first, right? Six to nine months. Six to nine months, but um, the stock market is going to try to guess where the economy is yep. going. Yep. Um, and then there's that period where they cross over. Yep. Um, where the, both the markets are bare and and were recessionary, yep. but the market will churn much quicker than the economy does, yep. right? So you have to be prepared to take advantage and not think that you're going to get this right, yep, because you're not, yep, we're not. And we're professionals. I mean, right. listen, I I'd like to get lucky. I'd like to get lucky too. <laughs> so, but the point is, is if if you if you sort of like try to think that you know what's going to happen, you don't. Yeah. And if everything we think we know is all based on statistical models. Uh. And when you use average and you use all these things, average means that one bear market could be three months, yeah. and one bear market could be thirty months. You know, when you want to lie to someone, what do you do? You use statistics. <laughs> <laughs> statistics are very I would like to say that we are strongly in favor of statistics and numbers here at Cast, but um, everything works until it doesn't yeah, uh, exactly. every, as long as it doesn't because again yeah. it's an average so yeah, yeah. but you know during Ugh. these times like 2008-9 is a perfect example if you're waiting for, for yourself to feel better or for the economy to yeah. be out of re recession and all yeah. that to make your investments in 2009 when the market bottomed to the point where we were, quote, not even when we learned we were out of recession, but the end of the last quarter that yeah, was out of recession. When you felt better. 35% <laughs> yeah. on the S&P during that time period. Yep. And just think of how big a difference that makes being out of the market during those times. Yeah, and, and that's really that's really amazing, right? Like you, you're going to miss 
the best days yeah. if you're going to try to wait till he feels best. Correct. And that's, and that's really the purpose of, of, of investing is really kind of trying to remove these externalities because yeah. all, ultimately what's going to happen is just going to make you not a good investor. Yeah. You know? and, and that's really what we need to kind of avoid. You know, use the serenity prayer, people. You know, give me the strength to control to <laughs> to accept the things I can't <laughs> control. You're not going to control the market. Yeah. You're not going to guess where the market bottoms or tops. Right. And if you guess one, you probably won't guess the other. Yeah. And if you even guess both of them right, yeah. you got lucky. Um, and and as long as you stay invested over time and you know what your risk tolerance is and you know what the goal is longer term, yeah. you don't have to fear these times. Yeah. Because just accept that we're in it. Yep. And the only way out is through. Yep. And that's exactly it. Like I, I think the reality is it's money is emotional. Everyone yeah. feels it. Just try to control those emotions For sure. basically. But let's let's talk about playbook. Yeah. Like what's what's the playbook if we go into recession? Yes or no? Like what happens? Like what do we invest in? And yeah. kind of we talked about paradigm shift. Like what 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 what's the shift that's happening right now? Yeah, so so in general during both recessionary and inflationary environments, certain sectors of the market do better than others, right? right? So those sectors are the more defensive sectors. Right. Okay, that's your consumer staples, right? That's your, you know, your your toilet paper companies and yep. the the stuff the, the grocery utilities. stores. Uh well, staples specifically. Yep. Um because you're going to need those no matter what, right? And utilities, right? There's not a lot of volatility in these stocks. They yep. pay very high dividends. Um and people are still need to pay their electric bill. So uh, dividends, right? So dividends are get, a big get, one. Get paid. Get and, paid and, while yeah, you wait, right? Exactly. So you buy companies that provide you some kind of cash flow, right. right? That's really important during tough times, right? When interest rates go up, you know, high growth companies, which basically have their cash flows in the future, right. companies are going to make money in three or four years, those get discounted the most, yeah. right? Because rates are higher right now. I can put my money somewhere else and get the return versus waiting yeah. four years to hope that I'm going to get that kind of return. Correct. Right? And that's that's the risk adjustment that's happening. 100%. Yeah. And, and also the risk adjustment happening is people don't realize that or don't want to admit that that's what's happening. That's correct. And But I want to make the distinction here, right? Because if you're... What Hatem is talking about is buying stocks like Coinbase, stocks like yeah. SoFi, yeah. right? That are highly speculative, highly, you know, contingent on basically using money, free money to yeah. sort of expand Keep your growing. You know, to grow to yeah. grow at all costs, so yep. to speak. Yep. Um, that worked until last year. Yep. I this doesn't include stocks that are still quote unquote growth companies, yeah. even if they get hurt, right? Your Apples and your Googles and your Microsoft, which are, a lot of them are down, you know, like Microsoft, I think is down 25%. Amazon Google's down, down 35%, mm -hmm. Amazon. So these, it the macro will overshadow each individual company, but the stronger your balance sheet, yeah. the stronger your company is and the lower valuation your company is, the less it's going to get affected. Correct. Even if people, sometimes people are going to throw the baby out with the yeah. bathwater. Yeah. And by the way, growth will always come back. Like, yes. At what some point. So some that's point. exactly the point. So, yeah. so when markets churn, yep. right? When, when you're in, when you're coming out of the recessionary environments, what's the best investments to make during that time? Growth companies. Growth companies, <laughs> yeah. right? Why? The consumer is improving. Yeah. Outlooks are improving. The stock market, a lot of it is based on how people feel about the future. Correct. Right? Right, right now, how do you feel about the next six months? I mean... I've, I think sentiment numbers, I've never seen the sentiment... The lowest ever. Yeah, the lowest ever. It doesn't feel that bad. Yeah. Like, I went to New York last weekend. It, people were out having... To, they, people are... Like, that doesn't... The, the reality doesn't match how bad people correct by the economy or by the future but that's what we are yeah you can't deny it right so. exactly so so growth investments right yep. small cap companies yep. mid cap large cap growth right um these are the ones that do better in this environment so once again investing is about diversification it's about allocation and it's about where you're trying to get to right. if your goal you know, I have clients who ask me this all the time. What do we do? How do we get the bleeding stuff? I go, if you're if your goal with this money is to retire yeah. twenty five years from now, right? Like, you, we shouldn't even be worrying about this. And if we, if you are worried, we have to de risk your portfolio right. at some point. Not now, maybe because right. markets are down. Yep. But but you need to understand the long term perspective of yeah. investing. And by the way, I think I want to add something to this. And we're t we're talking to you as people who are mid 
age? Is that what we? Sure. We, 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 are we, are we talking about us? Yeah, but us, right? Oh, we're they're, middle aged. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it depends. <laughs> if you think people are going to live to be 120, yeah. then maybe we're still in the early parts okay. of our life. So we have we have a, we have time on our side. We work with clients in all on all life cycles. Let's yeah. call it right. But we we believe in growth. We believe yeah. that growth is is should be kind of a pivotal part of any portfolio because ultimately the the we pay higher multiples for growth because they're going to deliver better returns over right. time it just happens that way right yeah and the technology technologies that are being created from evs to cloud to all these things are real like yeah. these things are happening and really creating some some real 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 uh, efficiencies for, for for humanity in general right but what we're trying to say here is that that paradigm where rates were going down last 10 years money being printed all these things lifted all assets yeah. going forward that's not the environment we're going to be in so picking different companies being actively uh, allocating assets to different yeah. places is going to yeah. actually have more value because you want to pick things that are actually going to do better because they have better management better uh, better margins better operating leverage you know so that's we're yeah. looking for good businesses and there are growth companies that that fall into that category but again if the market is against you it doesn't matter at this point correct so you know you wait for the opportunities and there are many opportunities yeah. brewing but the growth investments are great investments. We believe in them. You just have to be able to stomach yeah. more volatility, just plain and, and simple. So, you know, again, purpose of this podcast or this conversation is really to kind of share some of the conversation that we're having. And a lot of the yeah. questions that I get these days is, why don't we just wait? Wait it out. See what happens. You know? Yeah, I would and love uh, If I knew exactly when the market was going <laughs> to stop going down, yeah. I would love it. I joke with people all the time and they go, well, why don't we just wait? Or why don't you, how, how could we yeah. know better? And I said... If, if I knew those answers, the only person's money I'd be managing is mine. Right. And that's really the reality is 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 intellectual humility. Nobody knows yeah. when this is going to happen. Like, tomorrow, Putin dies. This market rallies 20%. You know, what are you going to do? going to just yeah. figure, tr try to jump in then? The reality is we don't know when, when, when these things will happen. So you go, you're going to take a, do you have a strategy? The strategy should be the dollar to cost average. Yes. To have the right allocation based on your age. You know, put, no, put and all not your, just your age, but what you're comfortable with. Correct. Because a lot of people learned about their risk tolerance pretty quickly over the last 12 months. Yeah. You know, it's, Something that we say in our business, everyone <laughs> is aggressive when things are going up, yeah. right? And everyone is conservative when things are going down, right? True. So you have to you have to kind of understand really what you're trying to do and and why you invest, really, right? Yeah. You invest to get to get ahead in life, to get to your goals, to be able to do the things that you need to do in retirement and other yeah. goals, right? Yeah. So you have to take that risk in order for you to get those results. And you, in order for you to take the risk, that's the price you have to pay. Volatility. Volatility yeah. is part of the game. There's no such thing as a free lunch. That is literally the first <laughs> thing I learned in my, my high school economics class. <laughs> first thing the teacher walked in and he wrote on the board and he wrote the acronym for it. And he wrote, there's no such thing as a free lunch. <laughs> yeah. Everything has a price. Even if you think it doesn't. Yep. And this is the price, guys. You don't get growth without volatility. It just yep. doesn't work that way. Yeah. Otherwise, everybody would be rich. Everybody yep. in the world will be rich. So don't give up on <laughs> investing. Bear markets are not cool, but Bear markets they're, are part not. <laughs> they're part of it. And, and here's the most important part. Okay. The average recessionary environment lasts 10 months. Right. So okay. we're like like right on there like well we have the recession not not bear market and the average bear market lasts about a year so they yeah. sort of coincide just a little bit yeah. different yeah. but the average economic expansion nice. lasts 69 months right so we're talking okay. four so or five years we're talking year. almost six years yeah. of yeah. expansion okay now again average means that it could be 10 years like we had yeah. in you know 2010 to 20 right or it could be two years like we had in 20 to 22 yeah. Right. But but the point is, is that over time, markets have gone up. Yeah. A lot more than they've got down, gone down. Yeah. And people all people know this, and you feed them, you tell them the data, and they know it, and they know it. But emotions still get the better of us. We are emotional creatures. Yeah. And nothing is more emotional to us than money. Yeah. Than thinking we're gonna lose everything. But remember, 
the stock market, the bond market, whatever the case may be. We haven't even talked about the bond market having its worst oh, year. Yeah. If you want the podcast to be last on the <laughs> Apple, let's talk about bonds. Uh, <laughs> but the fact that the bond market has had its worst year on record. Yeah. Right? I, again, I'm I'm tired of all these the first records. <laughs> yeah. It's the first time ever. Then, but we, yeah, you know, bonds are down 10%. You know, that's your safe money. It doesn't yeah. feel good to right. see your safe money down right. 10%. You know, and it's it's just, but it's it's frankly, it's an amazing opportunity to buy bonds. To buy now. bonds because Remember, you can you afford can buy, five. <laughs> you can actually get income. Bonds now. do what bonds are supposed to do: give you income. Now, yeah. Remember <laughs> when people would come to us to re uh, in retirement three years ago, and they're like, "I want a safe investment." And you're like, "Well, the twenty-year Treasury is paying one percent, so I don't really yeah. know." Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, so again, like, I, I think a lot of this stuff is, is super can be super technical, but oftentimes it's also like it's just it makes sense, right? Right? You know, things are changing. Nobody likes change. Yeah. Nobody does. You know, especially when change involves us losing hundreds of millions of dollars and trillions of, it's like seven trillion dollars in wealth wiped out this year. 23, no, I think it's now like 25 almost 25 globally. 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 So yeah. a lot of money has yeah. been lost. A lot of wealth has been has been lost. It's lost, but it's going to come back. It's just nobody knows when that's going to be. And I, another thing I think people forget because we all know we look at where our account was at the height, right? For yeah. those of you who have invested for several years, yep. remember what a we had a pretty good bull run for a decade. Right. Okay. And the markets don't go straight up. Right. They just don't. Yeah. Um, the business cycle, the market cycle is cyclical. But if you miss the few really good days a year when there's yeah. a snapback, then you miss most of the move. So this is why I tell clients to answer your previous question, yep. Tam. Why not just sit and wait? Because if we miss those couple of days, then then we're screwed. Yeah. Long term, basically, if you miss the best, I don't know, 10, 10 days, days of, yeah. of the year or whatever, then you're you're basically half in your return overall. Yeah, so, exactly. So, you you know, it, you, that's why you can't retime things. That's correct. Uh, the last the last question that um, that we we should address is. Um, why, why don't we wait for the bottom? Like, why don't, what don't we keep, what can we wait for the bottom to happen? Right. And my answer to that is the cost of waiting. Like if you yeah. waited, like, like, let's say if you, if I, if I, if I invested my money today and the market goes down another 5%, mm -hmm. you know how many days that is when the market comes back? It's two days. Yeah. Right. So in a recovery, the cost, of, the, 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 the cost of waiting is not that big, yeah. you know, because if you don't, because nobody's going to time it properly. No, there's if, no chance. Right. I mean, there is, you can, you can be lucky. Okay. You can be that I'm person sorry. that put, okay. that put there's a very, in September please, 23, please, 2000. Yeah. <laughs> there's a very, very little chance. Yeah. Um, um, that you're going to, that you're going to time it right. All right, but anyhow, like even if you if even if you if you, if you if you don't time it right, and most people don't, that cost of of five or ten percent is really a few days when yeah. things come back up. Because when when things come back up, they come back up really fast yeah. and really hard. You can really easy to see three four percent up days. Yeah. After a really shitty days. Yeah. Just think of COVID. Yeah. Just think of the last time the market had a downturn, which was two and a half years ago. Yeah. Two years ago. If you missed those first few days, last few days in March, right. you know, the, the days before those yeah. felt awful, yeah. but the days following those were, we made most of that money back. Yeah. And I think there was one day where there was literally like the market moved down 5% and then like up 5% in the same day. <laughs> same it was day. like a 10% intraday market yeah. move. Yeah. And, and frankly, like we know this, Hatem, because we deal with clients all the time. Mm. We've seen hundreds and thousands of clients, yeah. right? More often, way more often than not, people don't time it right. Not just that they don't time it right, but rather than investing early, they invest too late. Right. And then and then you sort of hurt yourself doing yeah. that. Yeah, and that's the that's the you know, growth at any rate, right? At any valuation. That's when you buy things, you're chasing things, yeah. you're buying things too expensive. Yeah. You know, so you gotta you know, you gotta understand this is doesn't feel good. But this is also the good time to actually start buying things. Correct. And because things don't feel good, just because of that, yeah. things are cheap. And and remember that when things are bad, when the outlook is gloomy, when everything seems terrible, even a little bit of 
not so bad news. Yeah, right. <laughs> makes the market rip sometimes. So if, if expectations Powell, yeah, are low, totally, man. <laughs> and they're like, oh, we're gonna have negative two percent earnings, and the earnings are negative one point eight percent. The market could pop because of that. Like that's yeah. the stuff that happens on the short term. Yeah. In in the markets. And bond markets too, because they've gotten they've gotten so rattled. So yeah. it's important again to just stick to what you're trying to do for the long run. Right. And do what Warren and Buffett does. Talk to does. a professional, man. Talk if to you, a professional, but do what Warren Buffett does, and never bet against America. That's <laughs> that's true. I, I hear that so much, and I totally believe in that because yeah. we have some of the best companies, some of the best. You know, and, and listen, as much as people can say Powell and the Fed is wrong and made a mistake and blah blah blah, yeah. the reality is. We have the most secure financial system in Correct. the world, and that's really important for asset prices, right? Like, yeah. you know, I, I, you know, we can talk about the dollar being strong and so forth. The reality, the dollar is strong because we are the house on the beach. Mm -hmm. America is really the best place to be. We dealt with COVID fairly well in, in the most part, right? Despite all of our problems, yeah, right? Totally. We have good companies, good businesses, households are fairly good. The economy is chugging along. There's a lot of things that are yeah. going on. That's not the case in Europe. That's not the case in China. That's not a case in, in a lot of places, in the yeah, emerging totally. market. So that's why people are buying dollars. And that's why, I mean, even the UK. The UK, look at what's happening. It's what a mess that is. I couldn't believe it. I went to, I went to London <laughs> in 2008, literally the worst time ever. <laughs> it was 2.1 to the dollar. Yeah. Now it's basically like 1.1. It's no, it's, it's almost crazy. one. Yeah, it's today. almost one. Yeah. Like every, yeah, I'm sorry. Every yeah. I only I looked yesterday, yeah, so yeah. it could be different today. So you know, <laughs> it, it's it, it's again like you don't bet against America. That's what I'm trying to say. Yeah, and that's why everyone's buying dollars. Bitcoin was supposed to be the, the inflation hedge. It hasn't worked out so far, but it's an inflation hedge <laughs> to the downside too. Is it, it just cuts inflation yeah, for sure? Exactly. Uh, you know. And, and we do believe in Bitcoin. And I think, you know, this last part, maybe we just talk a little bit about the things that we do like longer term. Yeah. Um, Bitcoin I wish, is a speculation. I wish, I wish crypto people stopped making Jamie Dimon sound right. Because there's so many, like how many Bitcoin, crypto, heist, slash, yeah. you know, you know, this guy in Korea now is on the on the run. You know, the yeah. other guy from Celsius is stepping down. Like, it's really unfortunate. I mean, it's, it's early stages. We need again. regulation. With regulation, you know, yeah. The way the way I tell people who who invest in crypto is always right. We we talk about it with our clients. It's a speculation. It's not an investment. And yeah, exactly. I think it's important to understand it's two different, different things. things. Yeah, a speculation, an investment. I'm making an investment in a company that has cash flow, that has yep. earnings, or maybe yep. it has a potential of earnings. Bitcoin, I don't know what it's worth. Is it worth twenty thousand? Is it worth two hundred thousand? Is yep. it worth two thousand? Nobody knows. Whoever, whatever somebody's willing to pay for it, that's the definition of a speculation. Right. So I look at Bitcoin as, yeah, you know, or, or crypto, Bitcoin and Ethereum is the ones that we like. Think about it as an ultra high value tech stock. That's exactly it. And if you look Which at it- Which is not what you want to own right now. <laughs> no, it's not. But if you already owned it, yeah. by the way, free free advice here. If you own crypto, you could sell it and rebuy it back. No yeah. wash sale rule. Yeah, that's um, true. It's so, a great, so you don't yeah. have to wait 30 days like Tax you do with- Tax alpha. <laughs> Tax alpha right there. <laughs> um, but, but basically like, you know, we still believe in this thing longer term, but this is this is not the time to speculate on stuff. Now, if Jerome Powell comes out after November's yeah. meeting and says, we're going to take a breather for a little bit. Yeah. Then it might be risk on again. We yeah. don't know for sure, but but yeah. buy the assets that you're most comfortable holding for yeah. the long run. But also, if is not a good strategy. Right. Yeah. So have a have a plan, have a yeah. strategy. Like, you know, understand really what your tolerance is, understand where your assets need to be and, every and di time. diversify every time. And that's how you really be, are successful long term. And the most the, the, the thing that we do for our clients that's more important than any investment we make for them yeah. or whatever stock we buy for them or, or ETF. Is it allocations? Is allocation and managing emotions. Yeah. Okay. Because yeah. most financial blunders happen yeah. during these times. Correct. And that is what stands in the way of most people's financial success. It's not that they picked the S&P 500 fund over the NASDAQ 100 fund. Right. Right. It's about what decisions did I make? I, I wasn't investing in line with my goals. I was... YOLOing my money, yep. God knows what. Yep. But ultimately, managing your emotions and preventing you from making bad decisions yep. in up and down markets yep. Yep. is is super important. So, yep. so talk to somebody about your investments. During these times, we like to reach out even more yep. to people 
Because it's a tough time. But guess what, guys? We're going to get through it. Do you know why it's called bear market? Because <laughs> um, I don't know. Because bears rip your face off. Is that why? <laughs> I, 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 I wish. Because they're going to sleep? No, actually, it's it goes back to the 1600s when the English used to go and... and uh, skin the bears okay right like when they go and hunt the bear and take the skin off yeah and when they ship them that's like for some reason that's a negative thing that happened back then huh. so that's why bear markets are uh you have to check me on that on those facts but i, uh, I, gotta, I gotta go this gotta, gotta, on our yeah. next podcast i'm gonna come up with the entire story i'm gonna read it <laughs> verbatim yeah please um, anyhow I just, assume, I just assume bears rip your face off they do you rip your them. face off too that's true <laughs> that is true anyhow uh you know we're here if you need if you need support if you need people to talk to talk to a professional you know yeah. these are uncertain times for everyone it doesn't matter how long you've been investing yeah she doesn't feel good you know and um and the reality is we'll get through them i don't yeah. know when nobody knows when but probably more 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 closely than than not so yeah just look at a long-term yeah chart of markets yeah and it'll make you feel a little bit better well thank <laughs> you y'all good to see you again hey, good man, to be good back to on too. future money yeah. i promise the next one will be about how to make money not 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 <laughs> about bears and yeah i think i think we're done with the bear market yeah, recessionary yeah, guys yeah yeah exactly um, so so you, you can refer to these in the future if <laughs> if you're still feeling it but yeah. next time we'll, we'll talk about something more exciting all right thank you <laughs> all right cheers cheers <laughs>